But they say... See, I think, right, I think that the overwhelming majority of people have one aim in life, is that they want life to be fairly peaceful, they want to be able to get on with the next door neighbour, they want to be able to do their job, bring their kids up, and most people's lives, whether you are Palestinian, whether you're Israeli, whether you're British, whether you're South African, it doesn't make any difference, most people just want to be able to just get on with their lives, and not really have any sort of political like wars or anything going on but i think that there are a, a small and very often politically powerful minority of people who are able to stir up great hatred towards uh-huh. the person in the next village the person in the next town or the next country um, and these people often are successful in what they do in, in being able to stir up and every time one innocent person on either side of of the conflict is killed it, it recruits another hundred um now I, I put it to you before that if israel were to say take no aggressive action at all unless they could target and highly target individuals who they, they knew for certain were part of the problem but if they were to take no other sort of military action that i felt that world sympathy for israel would increase but more importantly Sympathy for Israel would increase amongst the Palestinians. Um, what would you What would you say to that? I say that taking no action is far far worse than taking action, because uh, some of the Palestinians or some of the uh, Hamas or Fatah really understand that if you will take no action, you are weak, because you are afraid what the world will say. So because of that, uh, if you are not taking action, you are showing weakness. And this is one of the problems that the government uh, is trying to address. And see, most of see, the time... Yeah. Sorry, but no. Um, I mean, obviously I'm a lot older than you. And I don't have a... I'm not going to try and pretend that I have a massive understanding of, of the history of Israel. But... Certainly, for example, during the Six Day War, world sympathy was with the Israelis. Um, and for a long period after that, world sympathy was with the Israelis. Yeah. Um, but that seems to have gone. And it, it hasn't gone because the perception is that Israel n- are no longer under attack by, by terrorist organizations. It's gone because some of the responses from Israel have been perceived as being disproportionate and targeting of people who actually had nothing to do with the problem. Now, I'm not saying that that my perception is right or that world perception is right, but that is the perception. And if I still think that if Israel were to greatly reduce what actions they took back against them, they would they would gain more world sympathy and I think they would gain more sympathy towards the average Palestinian but, but from the average uh, Arab who, who would actually start to think y- you know what maybe we're in the wrong here you know if all if all we see is Jewish kids getting killed and but what we don't see is Arab kids getting killed maybe more Arabs will actually start to think you know what fuck it maybe we are actually in the wrong and maybe these terrorist bastards who've been ruling our lives are the ones who are in the wrong you but know ev- Sorry, yeah, on. continue, continue. No, 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 go on. You know, uh, I'm hearing what you say, and it's it's not it's not so simple. It's not that we are trying to deliberately hit a civilian population. The problem is that the Hamas is doing a double war crime. They are firing from a civilian um, uh, territories into a civilian territories over Israel. And then hiding behind women, women and children. Right. Can I just inter- no, I'm going to interrupt yeah, you there because this, yeah. this is getting to the heart of the matter. Why do you think Hamas are doing this? Why because do you they're, think that they're firing from a civilian area? Because they want uh, to use it for uh, propaganda. You know, it yeah, really, what, really looks good. <laughs> that's if, exactly right. What yeah. they want is for Israel to respond to that civilian area, and then they can say, "Look, Israel's killing civilians too. They're just as bad as us." That's what they want. Yeah, and, and, time... and continue, continue on. Yeah. 
I was going to say, every time that Israel respond by doing that, they are playing into the hands of the terrorists. They are giving them the oxygen of publicity that they want. Yeah, but last week, uh, I think it was uh, two weeks ago, when Israeli government say to the Hamas, stop firing a piece uh, will be answered with peace, but firing upon will be answered by fire upon. And the Israeli government said to the Hamas, we don't want another conflict. We want to go to the table and talk peace, not war. Now, it's, and... it's certainly, I'd, I'd say it's the case that within Hamas, there are actually people there who do want this. There are within Hamas people who do want peace. And there are also people within Hamas who it serves their best interest to keep the conflict going as long as possible because it gives them local power. It gives them uh, a position within their own society. And just there was exactly the same thing with, with the IRA and with Protestant organizations in Northern Ireland. There were people who want the conflict to go on and they're the ones who are winning. Somebody yeah. has to say, <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Enough. We've had enough. We'll put our weapons down first. Well, somebody we somebody has to do that. We tried it. in Back in uh, 2006 or 2005, I don't remember, there was still uh, settlements inside of Gaza Strip. And Prime Minister Ariel Sharon uh, said, OK, we stop this. We pull him out of your territories. We don't want this to continue. We want this. OK, we are pulling out. Leave us be, take your territories in Gaza Strip, leave us alone. You know what happened? They are not not only that they are started to fire uh, more, they are started to they started to fire farther. Okay? Mm -hmm. Instead of firing on only I say it with uh, you know, with quotes, only to fire on the route and on the area around Gaza Strip. They are starting to fire on Ashkelon and later on on Be'er Sheva and Ashdod. And now they are firing on Tel Aviv and Zichon Yaakov and Jerusalem and more and more places around Israel. Mm -hmm. in, uh, and why, why, see, to me, what that proved was actually the non-aggressive stance was successful. And I know that sounds crazy thing to say, but, it, but basically that the... The terrorists within Hamas, the, the ones who want to perpetuate the violence, they had to keep pushing it because the biggest thing that they fear is not losing the conflict. The biggest thing that they fear is that there will be no conflict. Yep, and they, they fear peace. Yes. And it's up to each successive generation, I guess, to sort of someone has to put their arms down first i guess anyway listen i'm gonna let you wrap it up but just before we do I, I i really do want to thank you for for bringing your perspective um thank you for, for giving us some information about a world that you know thankfully i'm never going to see uh, i really do hope that that one day peace will be achieved in your part of the world um i think it's a fundamental Human right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to end with a question to to you and the audience. Um, well, will uh, England tolerate missiles on uh, London? Will France be will tolerate missiles on Paris, Germany, on on uh, Munich or on Berlin, and so on? So think about it. Why should a country uh, should not? Uh, should tolerate fire for 15 years on it's, on right. cities and towns in it's, her borders. Right. Well, we're going to have to extend this because <laughs> because that question does deserve answering. Um, now, as I said, like I'm Irish, um, come from the from Southern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, which is not part of the United Kingdom, just clarifying that for anyone who, who may not be sure um and i grew up at in the uk at a time when the ira were bombing civilian places in the uk mainland and it was i used to hear every fucking day of my life that what they should do with ireland is round everyone up into a big ball and drop a nuclear bomb on them Right, that was what people's attitudes were. 
and the, the more entrenched that the British came in in meeting violence with violence, the worse the violence got. So the British were then, they would kick the doors down of people for no other reason than they were Catholic. They would lock people up and put them in prison without trial, without the right for a lawyer, until we ended up with the hunger strikers who have now been vindicated throughout history. We had things like the, the bloody Sunday massacre where um, British troops fired on people who were actually just protesting within, within the bounds of democracy. They were just protesting about the situation, protesting about internment and stuff. And basically, I'm not saying that the British government should have tolerated it, but you don't solve something by going out and recruiting on behalf of the IRA. It just, that doesn't work that way. There were so many people who were vindicated in joining the IRA because of atrocities that the British then did against the Irish. And all it did was perpetuate the war. And peace can only come around when people say, we will put our weapons down. And yeah. yes, that, that, leaves, that leaves one side exposed. I know yeah. that. And I know that further innocent people will die. But the, but the more innocent people that die, th those people would have died anyway, as, as long as the conflict is still going. Mm -hmm. people, innocent people will die. But once, um, once one side says that, well, then perhaps you get the rest of the world on their side and not just the rest of the world yeah. on their side, but people within that very nation, in, in this case, Britain, if if the only atrocities that came around were the Irish people getting the shit kicked out of them, then eventually British people would say, come on, guys, this this is wrong. We've got to stop it. Okay. Um, first of all, it will sound like a cliche, but our conflict is really different from yours. But... I understand what you are uh, talking about, and what I have to say is this. If tomorrow the Palestinians will put down their weapons and say, we don't, war, we don't want war anymore, okay, we won't have a war anymore, they could choose to build a country totally or that. join our country, but if the Jews, the state of Israel, we lay down the weapon, the next day there won't be any more state of Israel. And this is this is why we need to not uh, uh, retaliate for every action, but stand on our feet and keep vigil to what is happening around us. And not, uh, not be on a state of mind that nothing can harm us but to be vigilant and be ready for peace, okay? I said before and I will say it again and again, I don't want war, okay? I know uh, you me, don't. Me, my I, family, I don't. we don't want war. Most of the Israeli people don't want war. We just and want to... Can, can, can you yeah. at least also say that most Palestinians don't want war? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Thank I you. I once have a conversation. I think I don't re I don't remember if it was a Palestinian or was uh, an Arab uh, that live in Israel that is a citizen of Israel. But I I talked to him and he said, that, well, the the majority is a silent major majority, and the minority is the one that are making all the fuss about. <laughs> and the the majority is afraid of the minority, and this is one problem that we have almost everywhere in the world. I, I agree, and I'm going to wrap this up on a positive note, right? Because I mean, you're, you're an Israeli. Uh, yeah. I, I'm. I live in the UK, but I'm Irish. And we play with a friend who is also Irish, and yeah. What people sometimes question why on a gaming channel I, I kind of talk about stuff like this, you know, stuff that has nothing to do with gaming. But my my kind of like hope, I guess, is that the more people like you and I who play games with each other, who find a common ground with each other, just through playing an online game, maybe it's going to be people like us who actually change the world. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so that one day we could say that. We, we may not be the main 
uh, the main uh, people who started it, but we were some of them that started the the term that called world world peace, like uh, a perfect world with double quote that someday I hope that we will have. All right. Thank you once again for joining me. All right, guys. Thank this you, Muppet. Oh, you're more than welcome, buddy. This is my pin out. If you do have any comments or questions, please put them down. Um, as always, give it a like and a share and blah, 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 blah. And you're awesome and I'm awesome. And everyone in the world is awesome. Ciao.